All right, guys, so here's the review of the new Phoebus Eagle Ray compressor. So this is the PY039. So I was sent this watch for free, full disclosure. So don't have to send it back, but you know the score. It's not gonna change the way I do my reviews. Gonna keep it 100% honest all the time, no matter what. So there's a few little changes from the previous version of this. We'll touch on them as we get into the review. But the question is, is it better than that one? Is it worth getting? Let's get down to it and find out. So here's the box it comes in, usual Phoebus one. Which is quite nice. And then quickly pop that to one side and we'll talk about what else is in here. So you've got the instruction manual and we've got the warranty card. So you've got a two year warranty on this. They've also got a three free 30 day return and refund if you're not happy with it or if there's any issues, which is good, but you're not interested in all that. And then we've got the watch in here. The only other thing is in here at the moment is the links that I've taken out. So get all that out of the way. So here's the watch itself. And you can probably see straight away, in fact I might as well zoom in, that texture on that dial. So not only is it sunburst, it's also textured too. So you get that really cool effect. Which I'm pretty sure the previous version didn't have. It just had the sunburst and didn't have that texture to it too. So it just takes it to another level, I think. Another thing you'll probably see is we've got a bit of AR coating on there. Some people might not like it because it is slightly blue. I personally don't mind it too much. But when it comes to the dials on this, there's quite a few options to pick from. I won't list them all. I'll leave some pictures on screen so you can see what they're all like. Because like I say, quite a few of them. So if you don't like this red, you should be able to find one you do like. Another thing that people may not like, but you're probably not watching this video if you don't, is that Phoebus logo. I personally really like them. I know some people don't know. And as always, it is quite a big one on there. And it's not the only one either. If I get a zoom out, we've got a couple on the crowns too. And we've also got a big one on the back. On that case back, the usual Phoebus one. So if you're not keen on it, this probably isn't the watch for you. Getting back to the dial. So we've got applied indices. And then we've got those nice large hands. So you've got plenty of area for loom on them. Got that nice silver surround around the date window at the three. Would have preferred it at the six, but I don't mind it there. And then we've got that chapter ring around that with the Roman numerals. And there is quite a bit of depth to this as well. And obviously we have that in a rotating bezel. So it is actually screwed down. So if I unscrew it and then you can turn it either way to bi-directional. And then when it comes to lining it up, you have to just line up as best you can, push it in, screw it back down straight away, and it will stay there. So you're not going to be knocking it, which is always good. Because you don't always get that. They tend to sometimes not have a screw down on that bit. So I'm glad that this one has. When it comes to the rest of the watch, as I said, we've got side grounds on both. Really grippy too. No issue with that. So it's a fairly plain case design otherwise. Got some chamfered polished details on the edges, but otherwise it's all brushed. And then with the actual bezel, got a nice bit of coin edge on that. And a slight step on that crystal. And an ever so slight curve too. It's not completely flat. And again, as I said, we've got some AR. When it comes to the bracelet, we've got a nice mixture of brushed and polished. Those little polished edges on the detail. And those center links. And then we've got screw links as well. Got a nice milled clasp, double pushes. And we've already discussed the case back. We've also got solid end links too. Got three levels of micro adjust there, and then that Phoebus branding. No cracking this time, or octopus, or whatever you want to call it. So let's get on to the dimensions of this then. So we've got a thickness of 13.9, diameter of 41, lug width of 20. Now, with the lug to lug, because we have got 
a little bit of protrusion from those end lengths. They, are, they aren't actually female ones, it is going to be slightly larger. So the actual lug to lug is 47, but if you take into account those end lengths, it is a bit bigger. So it's coming in at 52.7, but it does actually wear better than that. I'll show you that in a bit, obviously, because it does curve down pretty much straight away. So before we test whether we've got sapphire and check out the loom, I'll quickly talk about the movement in this. So it's an NH35, so I'll show you that in action. We've got screw down crown, as I said earlier. So pop it out once, you can change the date. Pop it out again, second hand stops, go hacking, and then obviously you can just change that, pop it back in, second hand re-engages. And again, nice large grippy crown, so easy to screw back down. So no issues with that at all. Now let's test whether we have got sapphire. Using the trusty diamond selector too. And yep, yeah, we have got a sapphire crystal. So, always nice to have that. Not going to worry about it again, scratched at all. So, now let's check out the loom. So, there it is, you can see a bit already, but as always, let's charge it up, give it a proper chance. And there we go. So you can see, we've got BGW9 on that, that ice blue. And we've also got a loomed bezel as well, which is really nice, especially with it being an inner rotating one. I wasn't really expecting that. Nice and evenly applied. No patchiness there. And there's plenty on the hands, which is what you really want to see. Some of the indices, with them being a little bit thinner, don't have a lot of area for loom. So obviously they're not going to be as bright, last as long. But the hands, you're not going to worry about at all. So when it comes to loom, pretty good. Obviously the bezel fades a little bit quicker, because again, not as much surface area. But you expect that. But the bits that you really want, they hang on a really good amount of time. So it's 15 layers of BGW9 on this apparently. So as you expect with Phoebus, really good loom. So all it's left to do now is show you what it's like on wrist and then we'll wrap this up. So this is what it looks like on my 7 inch wrist. And as I said, it does wear better than that end link to end link measurement suggests because they do curve down pretty much straight away. So although the measurement was slightly larger, it doesn't really wear much larger. So if you've got a 7 inch wrist or above, you're going to be fine. If you've got less than 7 inches, probably might be a touch big. But... You'll have to make that call yourself. But as for the watch, I just think it's a really good looking piece. I just love the way it plays with the light, that dial. The little polished details, the crystal. It's a really nice piece all around pretty much. I can't really fault it too much. Possibly would have been nicer if we had some clear AR as opposed to the blue. Other than that, maybe female end links. But that's being really nitpicky. I've got a really nice fit on it. Again, really comfortable bracelet. Just a really good looking piece overall, I think. I do like the design of this one. And as with the previous Phoebus I had, the build quality is just top notch. No QC issues at all. So if you're interested in picking one up, links are down in the description as always. If you haven't seen my other Phoebus video, I'll leave a link to that on screen now if you want to check that one out. But that's it for this one guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.